Hey guys, it's Eric with the Preacher Boys podcast. Um, the IFB still manages to have stories that shock me, even after seven months of doing this show. Uh, someone in the Preacher Boys Facebook group shared a letter that was written to uh, Dr. Curtis Hudson, who was a huge name in the IFB. Uh, I mean, still a huge name. He's the father of Tony Hudson. Uh, he's a pastor. He was the editor of the Sword of the Lord for uh, many, many, many years. And uh, someone shared a letter that was written by a pastor to the Sword of the Lord. Um, and it's here's what it says. I'll just read what it says. It says, Just a note, I have been a very close friend of Dr. Curtis Hudson for many years. After waiting quite a few days and praying, I've decided to send this to these people Curtis mentions in the enclosed letter. I asked him point blank questions, and this letter is his personal reply to me. Please read it. I called and told him I was going to send copies out. And he said he would deny all of it, and he would name me personally, and it would ruin my church and ministry. He begged me to reconsider, but I'm doing what I think is right. I believe something should be done about Jack Hiles, and now I believe something should be done about Curtis Hudson, too. I'm sick of the whole mess. So this is from 1990. Uh, Basically, this letter was written from a concerned pastor, concerned about allegations made about um, Jack Hiles. It sounds like specifically uh, accusations made by Jack Hiles' daughter, uh, financial mismanagement, um, you know, sexual immorality, a long list of things, all the things I'm sure you know about Jack Hiles already. Our home was filled full of turmoil, hatred, stress, strife. And as a little girl, it was isolating, it was intense, and it was frightening. He had affairs, <laughs> he had a mistress for many years, the wife of a Sunday school teacher, built her family a beautiful home right around the corner from our house. You could see their family from our back door. It was, it was craziness, living one way, preaching another. I gotta tell you, the money part of it was pretty nice. As a kid, I mean, think about it. Tithes and offerings from 50,000 people, hello. (laughs) It created a lavish lifestyle for our family. My father owned most of the city (laughs) where the church was. He owned a college, two high schools, two grade schools, a cemetery, blocks of buildings. He was very wealthy. And even into our adult years, he owned us. He owned our homes, our cars, our furniture. He owned our lives. And we didn't dare cross him because we were too afraid we'd lose everything. He died a multimillionaire. He left nothing to his children. He left everything to the organization. But this is a response from Curtis Hudson. Now, again, keep in mind, Curtis Hudson was the president and editor of The Sword of the Lord. Curtis Hudson was one of the biggest names in fundamentalism. His name still carries a ton of weight. And Tony Hudson's name carries a ton of weight, his son. Um, And so here's the response. This is from Dr. Curtis Hudson, president and editor of The Sword of the Lord. It's dated November 23rd, 1990. It says, dear brother, and they remove the name. It says, thank you for your letter. It was good to see you the other day, and I'm glad God is blessing your church. I'm typing this letter myself, so please excuse my mistakes. Now, let me briefly answer your questions. Number one, yes, I do believe Dr. Jack Hiles has done wrong, has sinned, and there has been a cover-up. So this is a witness who knew Jack Hiles very well, was a huge name, again, in the fundamentalist world. Um, He says, I've recently been given some information that proves his wrongdoing and sin. I would love to see the information. One of his own children has stated all of it is true. I've been told his wife has said it is true also. Financial improprieties? Yes. Immorality? Yes. Okay. Number two. No, I will not ask him to resign from the sword board. I believe it is a local church issue and evident, oh, and evidently First Baptist Church has decided not to discipline Dr. Hiles. Dr. Hiles has told me he has confessed his sin and wrongdoing. He's now right with God and feels his resignation or public apology would do more harm than good for fundamentalism, young preachers, and churches across America. We hear this every time one of these cases come out. Uh, We we hear the sword of the Lord concur with him. Am I part of the cover-up? You will have to answer that question. Yes.
Uh, yes, I do believe that all the good Dr. Jack Hiles and Dave Hiles have done indeed outweigh their wrong. I believe they have many rewards waiting for them in heaven. Number four, my fellowship with Bill Rice, Vauclin, Hanford, Lee, Nelson, Van Imp, Kelly, and others has been strained and even broken. I believe that they have done much more harm to fundamentalism and this ministry than Hiles. They have sinned just as much, if not more, as Dr. Jack Hiles. No, I will not preach with them or for them and will not have them preach for me. Yes, I will have Dr. Hiles preach for me. Number five. Yes, Dr. Robertson, I'm assuming this is Bobby Robertson, um, knows of Hiles' sin. I have talked to him about it. Number six. Yes, I have been asked to resign. No, I will not. Page two. Number seven. I believe Bob Sumner to be of the devil himself. He's a bold-faced liar. I dare him to prove or even attempt to prove any immorality on my part. If it were not for him, I would not be constantly badgered with all these questions concerning Jack Hiles, and the sword of the Lord would not be in the condition it is today. God will take care of Jack Hiles, and I believe, at least I'm praying, he will take care of Bob Sumner too. If fundamentalism collapses, it will be Sumner's fault and a host of other preachers. Number eight. Yes, John Stancil is a music director at my son Tony's church here in Murfreesboro. Now, you know the impact and influence Jack Hiles has here on our ministry. So if you think I'm hanging on to his coattails, then so be it. My dear friend, I believe you are sincere and want to do right, but please do not write me again concerning any of this. You've been a very good friend to me through the years. I don't want to lose that friendship, but please keep this in the strictest confidence. All of this will pass by soon and we can go on. By the way, you know I will deny all of this if it gets out. Sincerely, Curtis Hudson. I don't even know what to say. When I when I read this, I just read this a few minutes ago for the first time. I didn't even know this document existed. But, I mean, the guts to write out all of this, to confess that you know about you know financial improprieties, immorality on, on Jack Hiles' part, to know there's something being done, and then to say that you're not going to you know, search out any punishment for him, but you are going to stop preaching with people who did call it out and that you believe that God's going to deal with people who are speaking out about, you know, all of these wrongdoings on Hiles' part. But it's just wild. To me. It's, it's, it's crazy to me to see this one written out. The fact that there's evidence of this is crazy, but two, it's just how often do you hear these same excuses over and over again, you know, about, you know, it's going to do more damage to the church if it gets out. I hear this all the time. Um, I've had pastors on the phone with me since doing the show and I'll get on the phone and they'll say, you know, I support what you're doing, calling out abuse, but, you know, talk about more than just IFB churches, you know, it's going to damage the church or, you know, sure, talk about abuse, but don't make it church focused because you're going to make people doubt the church. It's like, no, people are dying the church because they're being raped and abused. They're not doubting the church because people are trying to stop it. And if you think that's the case, you're so backwards in your way of thinking. But anyway, I just wanted to share that letter with you. I know this is a really quick little snippet, but the fact that this exists is crazy to me. And if you want to read the letter yourself, I'm going to put it on preacherboysdoc.com slash blog. Um, so you'll be able to check it out there. It should be there. Uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday, July 22nd. It should be available at the latest uh, tomorrow morning on Thursday, July 23rd. Um, if it's not there, feel free to shoot me a message. I'll get you a copy of it, but it should be there unless there's any kind of technical issues. So all right, guys. Well, um, I look forward to getting back on the normal Preacher Boy schedule here uh, starting August 2nd. We've got a ton of episodes lined up. I've been listening through some really amazing stuff. And uh, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to everybody for allowing me to step away for just a little bit um, and to kind of reframe, refocus, and uh, get ready to enter a new chapter with the Preacher Boys podcast and with you know exposing abuse within independent fundamental Baptist churches. For now, I'm going to sign off, but I'll see you all very soon.